Adolf-Grimme-Preis, Herbert Award, Deutscher Comedy-Preis. Von den prominenten Gesichtern, die wir schon vor die Campus-TV-Kamera geholt haben, da haben schon viele die ein oder andere bedeutende Auszeichnung im Regal stehen. Professor William E. Murner übertrifft sie aber wahrscheinlich alle, denn er wurde mit dem Nobelpreis für Chemie ausgezeichnet. Kürzlich war er hier an unserer Uni zu Gast und wir haben ihn getroffen. Laura Zieger stellt drei Fragen an William E. Murner. Professor Murner, you won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2014. Um, for your work at, wait, I have to see this, Super Resolve Fluorescence Microscopy. So my first question is maybe a little bit hard because I don't have any sense how this works. Can you explain it to me? Sure, sure, I certainly can. You know, what we want to be able to do is to see very, very tiny structures, but to use light to see those tiny structures. But visible light has a wavelength, okay? It's, it's a wave and it has a spacing between the waves that's too big to see very tiny structures. So it's been difficult to see the structures inside a cell with light before the work of the Nobel Prize. So we do it with single molecules, single individual molecules. Each one is very, very tiny, but we use them as light sources. We use them as little beacons that let us light up the structure. So imagine if you wanted to see uh, at night the branches of a tree, but it's dark. You can't see the branches of the tree. So this, what we do is very much like uh, if you could place fireflies along the tree. You've, you've seen fireflies blinking. And so if you place fireflies all along the branches, then they will blink on and off randomly. And at any given moment in a movie, you'll see only a few and you can find their positions very well. If you let the movie run for a while, eventually you get all the positions all along the branches and the branches appear. Just like pointillist art. It's very similar to pointillist art. And so we do that with individual molecules. If they are light sources inside cells, and we make them blink. We make them turn on and off. And that's how we're able to see structures at a much higher, if you like, fineness, okay, with a sharp image, even though we're using visible light. You already won a lot of prizes, like in the 1980s, and now the Nobel Prize. So do you have any other goals, or you have any prizes left for you to win? <laughs> You know, what, what drives us, what drives me, is science in general. What drives me is the ex exploration, always trying to answer new questions. Because that's what we've been doing since the beginning of uh, my work in, in science and what many scientists do. We, we want to understand be the behavior of nature at, at a very microscopic level. That is, we want to understand truly how it works. And so that idea goes throughout my life and it's going to continue throughout my life. There are so many more uh, unknowns about what, what goes on inside cells, how the little nanomachines work, that we want to continue to explore using these ultimate light sources. And that's the, that's the future for us, really, because there's so much that's still unexplored. These methods are relatively new. Our research shows that you are a big fan of guacamole. Can you explain it to us? <laughs> well, that's a, a pretty a pretty silly joke. It's a, it's a bit of a pun, and so that means that you have to sort of you know follow me to, to get the meaning of this. Uh, in, in in Spanish, you call the uh, avocado uh, mixture you call it guacamole, uh, but in chemists and physicists work with uh, a unit called the mole, and a mole is a very 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 large number of atoms or molecules. 10 to the 23rd, okay, 10 to the, with 20, 23 zeros after it. But we don't look at that many molecules, we look at just one, just one. So it turns out that uh, if you think a bit about it, uh, the number of moles that we're studying when we study one molecule is one over 10 to the 23rd, all right? So we call a single molecule a guacamole because a guacamole is uh, basically one over avocado's number of moles. This big number that's the size of a mole is, is called Avogadro's number. So we've changed his name, we've made this joke, it's something like a different prefix. I mean, and, and all of the other prefixes that are out there in chemistry, uh, there's one for a 10 to the minus 9, to minus 10, minus 15, minus 12, and so on. But here, we don't want to really want to have any fractions. We don't want to have any numbers after the decimal point. It's only one molecule. So it's one guacamole. 
Also ich habe ja jetzt schon was gehört von dieser hochauflösenden Mikroskopie. So ganz habe ich das noch nicht kapiert. Deswegen höre ich mir jetzt mal den Vortrag an, weil die Abschlüsse, die er alle hat, diverse in Mathematik, Elektrotechnik und Physik, habe ich auch nicht. Deswegen, ich gehe da jetzt rein und bestimmt weiß ich danach mehr. That results from statistical number fluctuations or the discreteness of individual molecules. 